Welcome once again to Lato's Law. Here's Steve Lato. Crazy story in the news about professionals cheating. And several people sent this to me from CNN Business. Jordan Volinsky wrote the article. Top accounting firm fined $100 million after employees cheated on CPA exams. And um, uh, I'm not a big fan of cheating. I was a professor. I taught law school for 10 years. I taught undergrad for a few years. And uh, cheating is the kind of thing that has no place in academia and certainly not in the professional world. So if you want to hire a professional, they've been licensed, they passed some really, really tough exam, it's good to know they actually passed it and they didn't cheat. Uh, and there is also something about somebody in this field of accounting or law cheating because that's not the kind of thing you want a professional doing. So top accounting firm find. Uh, Ernst & Young has been slapped with a record $100 million fine from the government after regulators found out that they knew some of its auditors were cheating on exams for several years did nothing to stop it. That is the findings of the government. The SEC, Securities and Exchange Commission, said recently that a significant number of the accounting firm's auditors cheated on the ethics portion of the certified public accountant test and other courses needed to maintain the licenses. And so, yes, they were cheating on the ethics portion. Question number one, should you cheat on this test? Yes or no? Perhaps more stunningly, the SEC said that the firm made a submission that it didn't have current issues with cheating when, in fact, the firm had been informed of potential cheating on a CPA ethics exam. The $100 million fine is its largest ever against an auditing firm. $100 million fine. This action involves breaches of trust by gatekeepers within the gatekeeper entrusted <laughs> to audit many of our nation's public companies says the director of the SEC's Enforcement Division in a press release. It's gatekeepers within gatekeepers. It's gatekeepers all the way down. It's simply outrageous that the very professionals responsible for catching cheating by clients cheated on ethics exams of all things. He added that it's equally shocking they hindered the investigation. This action should serve as a clear message that the SEC will not tolerate integrity failures by independent auditors who choose the easier wrong over the harder right. In addition to the fine, the SEC ordered Ernst & Young to retain two independent consultants to help remediate its deficiencies, with one firm reviewing the company's procedures on ethics and another on its disclosure failures. Ernst & Young said in a statement that nothing is more important than our integrity and our ethics, and it is complying with the SEC's order. We have repeatedly and consistently taken steps to reinforce our culture of compliance, ethics, and integrity in the past, a spokesperson for the firm said. We will continue to take extensive actions, including disciplinary steps, training, monitoring, and communications that will further strengthen our commitment in the future. This fine is double the one that was levied against KPMG back in 2019 for similar allegations of cheating. And so I'm not sure how CPA exams are administered. I, I, I'm not, okay? I took the bar exam back in 1991. And back in 1991, to take the bar exam in Michigan, you went to Lansing, you went to uh, East Lansing, the Breslin Center, where the Michigan State Spartans played basketball, and you would check in, and there were just tables out on the basketball floor. And you would go out, and you'd find your place, and you'd sit down, and you'd put your identification in front of you, and a proctor would come by and check your identification, make sure you were who you claimed you were. And then, as time approached, they would come out and they'd lay the tests on the tables in front of you and say, do not touch the test until they're told to do so. And you'd sit there with your hands in your lap and your writing implements on the table. And at whatever time the appointed time was, I think 9 a.m. to start the first session, they'd say, you may begin. And you'd turn the test over, and you would do the test. And that would run till, I think, noon. And then at 1.30, you'd come back for the afternoon session, and there were two sessions for two days each. And at the end of each session, when you were done, you would stand up, gather your stuff, and on the way out, you'd hand your test materials to the proctor, and you'd leave. You were done. You were done. And so the entire thing was being done under the direction of people hired by the Michigan State Bar. There's no question. And while you were working, there were people walking up and down the aisles to make sure nobody was cheating, make sure you weren't like looking at something. And uh, they, that, that's how they did that. So I don't know if because of COVID, things are being done differently. 
I don't know if the CPA exams are done in such a way that they trust the companies to just conduct the exams on site at their own places. I don't know. I don't know. But it is kind of strange because if you became aware of cheating by people who worked for you, I would have thought instead of encouraging it or condoning it, you'd be firing people. Uh, that, that's what I would assume. And the weird part is that you can imagine, think about this now if you're one of these firms, because there's two firms mentioned here. Ernst & Young is now, KPMG was a couple years ago. If you're one of these accounting firms and you've made national news because people who work for you are cheating on an ethics exam and you are alleged to have known about it, you've been fined by the SEC for it and you've agreed to pay the fines. That's not good advertising. Now, I know that some of these firms are so big, they probably figure that they're bulletproof. And maybe they are. I don't know. But the point is that this is a lot of bad publicity, especially in this field. And so every now and then you'll see, maybe during the Super Bowl or whatever, a a big ad for a, a big firm like this. But a lot of these firms don't advertise in that sense. They work off of their reputations. And many of them have got such big clients that everyone knows, like, oh, yes, they do the books for General Motors. They do the books for Westinghouse. They do the books for General Electric, that kind of stuff. And so it's a lot of it is just prestige. A lot of it is just prestige. And so this has got to take some of the luster <laughs> off your prestige when you are a top accounting firm and you've been fined a hundred million dollars after employees cheated on CPA exams. And the allegation is that you knew about it. So also cheating on ethics, which is even crazier. So, you know, I, I've, I taught for a few years, um, I mentioned earlier, and I've, I've got other friends who are teachers. A good friend of mine, Tom, is a professor, teaches at a college. And I've also had people in my family, my parents, my grandparents, and so on, all taught. And cheating is one of those things that's just, it's just so bad on every level because you go to school to learn something. Someone's trying to teach you something. And instead of learning it and showing that you've learned it, you cheat to get a grade to suggest that you learned it. But by cheating, you're acknowledging you didn't learn it. And so I will admit that I didn't have problems with cheating. I had one or two close calls. I might talk about them one day, but, but nothing that egregious. But I've known people who are teaching and have caught people cheating really, really badly. And it's not the right thing to do. It's the weirdest thing. I had a friend who used to jokingly say that education is the only field in which many people are happy to cut corners and not get what they paid for. Because all they want is the grade. So they pay to go to college, skip classes, turn in shoddy homework, and just hope they get the grade. It's like you paid for that education. You can go every day and get more education. But you're cutting classes, turning in shoddy homework... If that's what you want to do, knock yourself out. But you're not getting what you paid for, is the point my friend was making. So here we go. Top accounting firm fined $100 million after employees cheated on the CPA exams, including the ethics portion. (laughs) Jordan Valinsky wrote that for CNN. Trocon, Tequila, and Chad all sent it. Thanks a lot. Questions or comments, put them below. Otherwise, talk to you later. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching Lato's Law. Why shouldn't you leave a horse near cryptocurrency? Because it will chomp at the bit.